Hello, this is Bill Terra. The present development of global pandemic uh, brings uh, several social problems into sharp focus. The need for alert and responsive national and global healthcare systems are, of course, of vital importance. This has to do with the functions of governments and medical institutions, but what about individual responsibilities? What are we supposed to do? Do individuals simply wait until the problems become unmanageable and then be told to wash their hands and stay indoors? Or are there some deeper levels of thought and behavior that could serve our collective health now and in the future? The most current emergency revolves around coronavirus. This is an influenza that we know very little about, really. We have sparse information on it. The rates of severity and mortality compared with other forms of flu are not yet really known. Being vigilant is only common sense. But what I want to talk to you about is another form of infection that's perhaps even a more serious pathology. This is the limited scope of thinking and fear that's passed from person to person regarding the creation and the maintenance of personal health. This is a huge issue. The common use of the word virus is focused on communicable disease and malicious software programs. But I want to suggest that there's another kind of infection, perhaps even more serious than the other two, uh, in the long run. And I'm referring to the spreading of damaging ideas, ideas that in infect our consciousness and, and limit our innate ability to lead healthy lives. So what are these toxic ideas? Well, among all of them that are possible, uh, let's look at just a few. Number one is our lack of respect for nature. We've accepted a false narrative of humanity having dominance of, over all life on the planet Earth. It's a dangerous mental illness transmitted by politics and science and religions and our economic systems. We need to look at our relationship to the planet and respect that it's the source of our being. It's essential that we start acting as if all life matters, not only our own. Number two might be our lack of appreciation for our own human body. We're constructed to be healthy. Our body will always strive to establish health and stay alive. It's our biological priority. But the system only operates effectively if we treat it well. Natural functions of health maintenance and immunity are supported by a variety of influences that are completely under our control. These include good diet, physical activity, a healthy environment, positive outlook. It would be irresponsible to suggest that maintaining health is an ironclad guarantee that we'll never be sick, but it's the only logical and sensible option to take advantage of our full potential. As my wife Marlene says in every class that she teaches, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? Number three is that knowing is not the same as doing. We live in an information age and we all have lots of information, but we're always amazed with clients and students at the, how much they know and how, how little they do. <laughs> it's foolish to wait until diagnosed with an illness before taking action. We all have a tendency to do that. Uh, what to do from a dietary point of view is very simple and straightforward. It's probably the most simple. Number one is stop eating animal sourced foods, period. Dairy and excessive fat and protein consumption accumulate in tissue and become a breeding ground for disease. Stop eating refined sugars. They deplete natural mineral stores in the body and they undermine immune response. Stop consuming highly processed foods. They're packed with harmful chemicals uh, that disguise the true taste, texture, appearance, and smell of what you're eating. All of these foods exacerbate inflammation and set the stage for bio biological vulnerability. Go to macrovegan.org and download our free ebook, What to Eat. It'll give you a solid information that you need to know to follow a healthy and earth friendly diet. Increase your consumption of grains, beans, and vegetables, particularly dark greens. Eat simple. Incorporate miso soup into your diet on a daily basis. Miso soup, especially with mataki mushrooms, have been shown to improve immune response. And it's a tasty addition to any kind of diet. We are not powerless victims here. 
we have the capacity to change our lives for the better and influence the creation of a healthy society and a healthy planet. So join Marlene and I in the creation of a healthy world for humans and non-humans alike. Join the evolution. This has been Bill Terra for Macro Vegan. Thank you for listening. Be well.